Hey, JJ here again with the Out of Value. Okay, so today what caught my eye was a Ray Dalio article from uh, Ray Dalio of Bridgewater. And he posts things on his LinkedIn. So the link is, you'll see, if you're on video, you'll see the slide. The article is called The Popping of the Bubble Stocks. The Popping of the Bubble Stocks, an update from the 3rd of May. And it's very interesting. It's the next in the series of uh, that he writes. And what he says first, I need to introduce it. Having been through many bubbles over, me, over my 50 years of investing, about 10 years ago, I described what, in my mind, makes a bubble and used that to identify them in all markets. In markets, all markets, not just stocks. I define a bubble market as one that has been that has a combination of the following in high degrees high prices relative to traditional measures of value e.g by taking the present value of their cash flows from the duration of the asset and comparing it with their interest rates unsustainable conditions e.g extrapolating past revenue and earnings growth rates late in the cycle when capacity limits mean that, that that growth can't be sustained. Next, many new and naive buyers who were attracted in because the market has gone up a lot, so it's perceived as a hot market. Have we had that recently in the last couple of years? Oh, yes, we have. So, and the next one, broad bullish sentiment. Okay, so... We've talked about the sentiment yesterday. I talked about the sentiment being the worst it's been for a very long time. But in the last few years, it was the, like in 2020, it was kind of the opposite. So a high percentage of purchases being financed by debt. A lot of broad and specul speculative purchases made to bet on price gains, e.g. inventories that are more than, that are more than needed, contracted forward purchases, etc. What was shown in January and what is shown now, he talks about. So this is a, this is an interesting thing to me and I posted this on a, an invest, uh, a local investment forum, Facebook group forum and, and I got a uh, predictable response from, uh, from Tesla Fanatics out there. So sorry if you are uh, it's just what it's not what I'm saying. It's what Ray Dalio is saying. But I was kind of, kind of joking about Ray Dalio is dead to me now. Uh, sort of sarcastic, I suppose. So he says, and I'm going to put this on the screen so people can see this too. But in January, the bubble indicator showed that a the U.S. equity market as a whole was at the edge of a bubble, but not in an extreme bubble. I.e. 70% of the way toward the highest bubble, which happened in the late 1990s and in late 1920s. And B, the emerging tech companies, e.g. Tesla and Roku, which people obviously weren't, weren't happy to hear, were clearly in an extreme bubble. I also noted that other bubbly behavior, e.g. SPACs, the IPO boom, the big pickup in options activity, financed by the unprecedented flood of liquidity post-COVID had found its way into the asset markets, making things bubbly. I showed which stocks were in a bubble, were in bubbles, and created an index of those stocks, which I call bubble stocks. Right, so yes, this is what, it's interesting that the various opinions, because Jeremy Grantham was saying that basically saying that everything's in a bubble was one of the biggest bubbles in history, as big as the 1990s, and Ray Dalio is saying that it wasn't quite that big, but certain stocks were, the bubbly stocks, the innovation stocks, for instance. So he goes on to say, I'm just going to lay the groundwork, and then we'll, I'll go through some graphs that he has and comment on those. Since then, he's talking about since January, since then the bubble stocks popped. They declined by about a third over the past year, okay, over the past year, uh, while the S&P 500 is about flat. Well, I think it's about, it's down a bit now. Uh, I have to check that, wasn't it? Down about 10%. Maybe he wrote this a while ago. 
with those and other developments in the market, e.g. meaningful decline in frothy retail activity, meaningful deterioration of sentiment, and more and more. The emerging tech stocks no longer appear to be in a bubble, but neither do they appear to have substantially swung to the opposite extreme. So it's not necessarily true that now is a good time to buy them. All right, seems pretty clear. One more paragraph. Bubbles can take a long time to unwind. Two years in the case of the 1929 bubble, one year in the case of the 1990s tech bubble, and typically go to the opposite extreme. So just because they aren't at a bubble at a bubble extreme doesn't mean that they are safe or that it's a good time to get long. In fact, US stocks in aggregate still look overvalued to our measures. History shows that once the popping begins, bubbles are more bubbles more often overcorrect to the downside versus settling at a at more normal in quotes prices. So yes, that's pretty clear. From what he thinks about that, I don't need to really go over that. Uh, but I'll say it, that's interesting that he says that where the bu bubbles popping, it was like in innovation stocks and the, uh, some highly valued tech stocks, the COVID beneficiaries, I like to call them, now rather than innovation stocks because there were other other stocks too that went up other than tech. But really, the heat has definitely come out. So he's got lots of charts here, which are interesting because he's done a lot of research over the years. And uh, just to note that when I posted this on the investment forum, people and uh, people immediately shot back. Well, you know, he hasn't done well as an investor over the last ten years, and um, you know, Bridgewater's basically passed. He doesn't know what he's implying that he doesn't know what he's talking about. But you know, uh, I think I just look, looked it up, and Bridgewater's doing pretty well this year up, up until March anyway. They're beating the S and P five hundred, but. You know, people were, people were attacking that rather than what he's actually saying here and his research and, and so forth. It's tip, kind of a typical response. So, you know, even if even if uh, he hasn't, Bridgewater hasn't been outperforming recently or even in the last decade, doesn't mean what he has to say is wrong or not not interesting or valuable to look at. We can get something out of many things. So the bubble gauge, this is a graph. If you're just on audio, I'm going to explain it because uh, the, as I said, again, the video is on YouTube and on Spotify, you see it, but uh, I'm going to actually enlarge it so we can see it more. But the, so he's got uh, uh, graphs of the 1920s, the 1990s bubble and today. And um, as we can see, it shows that uh, the 1990s bubble kind of went up way at the top of his graphs, 100%, went down to 20%. And what he says about today is it went up to about 80, over, just over 80%, and it's now down to 40%. So basically implying that there are, there are uh, there's more to go in terms of uh, shaking out, but it didn't get to a very extreme point. But some stocks did, the extreme bubble being, bubbles being uh, stocks like, he said, Tesla and Roku, all mentioning Tesla is, uh, Blasphemy, isn't it? Absolute blasphemy as being in a, still being in a bubble. But people like Michael Burry have said as much, Jeremy Grantham, and others disagree. So this one, the chart show the chart the chart below shows the bubble gauge for the average of the most bubbly companies as defined in 2020. Readings for the most companies are meaningfully down. So this bubble says this this graph says bubbly companies in 20 slash 2021. Uh, so it went up in, in its chart here to about three and a half and down below zero now. So, and that's back to uh, uh, bubbly companies. Yep. So back to levels that were, it's like 2017 even. Mm, interesting. So the chart shows, the next one, the chart shows below the performance of a basket of emerging tech bubble stocks. Uh, what we call the bubble slice versus the S&P 500. Prices have meaningfully declined and have given up most of their COVID, post-COVID gains. So we have uh, total returns in the index to the start of 2000 and total returns year on year. So we can see that uh, total returns 
against the S&P 500. They're nearly kind of back down to where the S&P 500 is after going way up 200%. And uh, total returns are kind of well, the bubble slice is well below the S&P 500 after going way above it since, you know, since that, since the March 2020 uh, crash, well, let's say crash let, where, th- where the market went down about 40, 34, 35%, and then shot up from there into a bubble, and then it's crashed well below, actually below where it was, uh, even pre-COVID. So the heat has definitely come out. And so this is his graph that, that's proprietary information, he says, and uh, the US equity market, it shows how the conditions stack up today for US equities in relation to past times. These readings suggest that we're out of a bubble. So when I say proprietary, he's willing to show it, but he doesn't say how, how he came to the, the conclusion. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna enlarge this. So I don't know if you can see that, but I'll explain it. So this is, he talks about the various conditions, uh, current conditions compared to previous bubbles. So he's sort of basically saying that today uh, it's deflating, deflating, deflating. It also is deflating. Emerging tech is deflating. Somewhat frothy, it's still, um, prices are discounting unsustainable conditions. Still somewhat frothy today in emerging tech. But total market deflating. And this is from, you know, comparing to the dot-com bubble, which was red and flashing red, but red for all of the categories, bubble, bubble, bubble. So that the, the, uh, the, uh, the categories are prices are high relative to tr- traditional measure, measures. Number two, prices are discounting unsustainable conditions. Number three, new buyers have entered the market. Number four, there is broad bullish sentiment. Uh, purchases are being financed by high leverage. Buyers, businesses have made extended forward purchases. So some of those jump out to me. Uh, I mean, when he was talking about uh, January 22 emerging tech, he was saying like frothy, frothy, bubble, bubble, frothy, bubble, somewhat frothy. So that was the conditions. So, you know, comparing it to past bubbles, he's got 1920s bubble, 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 and frothy for the last one. Businesses, buyers, businesses have made extended forward purchases so basically you know for this for this emerging tech bubble he's, it's, he's saying it was definitely a bubble when it's deflating now and uh, for the total market in january 22 it wasn't so much so sort of said no bubble for prices are discounting unsustainable conditions and no bubble there is broad bullish sentiment mm. in january 2022 was it broad bullish sentiment no because it started it sort of fell off in November, December. Uh, somewhat frothy prices are high relative to traditional measures. Somewhat frothy, he said. So this is quite different from what Jeremy Grant and things. Uh, basically, Dalio is saying that uh, the bubble wasn't as big and it's sort of cooling down. And Jeremy Grant was saying that the emerging tech bubble burst last February and it's kind of now that now the generals are starting to be shot. So that's why the Nasdaq. NASDAQ is saying to go down since what, November, December into a bear market. And Daddy is saying that the bubble is deflating. So take what you will from that. Um, that's kind of all I wanted to say today. Oh, there's one more graph here. Let's just keep going a little bit further. So the bubble pricing, the current read on this price gauge for US equities is around 50, 50th percentile. So um, he's saying that the, the 1920s bubble was up to 100%, and the 1990s bubble up to 100%. And in relative, it, when it when it but when it burst, when they burst, it went down to about zero. And he's saying that we're now down to about 50% after being like uh, seems to be about 90. So the bubbles weren't as big, but it's only kind of half deflated. Um, and so even this. This is even more noticeable uh, in the in the U.S. software sector. Analyst earnings growth expectations for this sector have come down, but they are still relatively high compared to history. P's have 
reversed their COVID gains but remain high compared to history. Okay, so that's something software is still expensive, he's basically saying in the software sector. Um, how many new buyers, those who weren't previously in the market, have entered the market? So obviously there were a lot of new buyers since in 2020 to now. Um, he's saying this gauge this gauge shot above, above the 90th percentile in 2020 due to the to the flood of new retail investors who uh, into most popular stocks, which by other measures appeared to be in a bubble. More recently, we have seen a meaningful moderation in the pace of retail activity in the markets. It's now back around pre-COVID averages, so it's shot up way above and come back now. So that's the new buyers as a percentile has come back, way back. So that's interesting, and I've noticed that too. Some some retail investors, a lot have left the market, but they, you know, the whole stonks always go up. Remember that? Um, and now it's uh, we're far from that. Stonks don't don't always go up, and they're going down. So is there, uh, the another one, number four, is how how broadly bullish is sentiment. Well, we know I know you know from um, talking about this video yesterday. You go back and have a look at that. Is the, uh, the sentiment was absolutely terrible. It is terrible. Sixty percent, sixty percent of invest individual investors are bearish. That's and it's a, almost at a record, a record or you know historically very high percentage. Uh, our purchases being financed by high leverage. Uh, that's gone down too. Uh, 1990s was what was higher, but today uh, it's sort of gone down to still still pretty high, still pretty high, 60 uh, around 50 percent. All right, that's that's it for today. I um so to concluding, he's basically saying that everything we're seeing driving the bubbles in this segment of the market is classic, virtually the same drivers we saw 100 years ago in the 1920s and. A little over 20 years ago in the 1990s bubble, for instance, in the last couple of months, it was it was how tightening can act to prick the bubble. So he's saying that's a classic that the Fed's tightening, and now that's that's that acted as a pin to the bubble. To understand these dynamics, you must want you must you might want to review this case study of the 1920s stock bubble, starting at page 49. So this is from my book Principles for Navigating Big Debt Crisis. So that was his last book. Very big book. I haven't read it. I've read, read parts of it that have been, uh, but I haven't, I haven't read that on that, the whole book. I've read uh, sections of it in the introduction, which was pretty fascinating. Or the first, you know, chapter or two. And uh, so that's all I have for you today. That's just, I thought that was really interesting that what Dario's thoughts on the, on the bubble, another perspective on if it, is there a bubble, uh, you know, there's a consensus among, there seems to be a relative consensus among these very experienced older, older investors that there is a bubble. Even Charlie Munger and uh, Warren Buffett over the, over the weekend at the at Berkshire's annual event basically imply there's a lot of speculation around and these are the stocks and saying how, how trash Robin Hood was and all this and I'm not going to go into crypto but anyway that's it for today like and subscribe if you like this and uh, and uh, you've seen it on the screen if you're on video the Art of Value Twitter is the Art of, at the Art of Value catch me there uh, in conversation and we'll see you next time